Content. Um, this is not meant to be a 30 minute uh, presentation on something, but um, rather actually a 5 minute introduction and then 25 minutes of, of your input on and your conversation. Um, these guys are very trimmed down, they leave out many details uh, in order to, to make this happen. Um, my name is Matthias Schindler, I work at uh, Wikimedia Germany um, as project manager. Uh, I used to be uh, an author at Wikipedia, and before that I was at the German National Library for a while. Um, government created content uh, is something you can see on Wikipedia. Um, actually, you can see it in almost every edition of, um, uh, in every language edition of Wikipedia. You'll see it one government created work, it's a picture of planet Earth. Uh, one specific uh, picture is part of the uh, Apollo um, mission, uh, a picture that has uh, become kind of an uh, icon, um, and everyone just um, did an um, acceptable job in just picking this one to illustrate the article on Earth. What's special about this one is um, it is in the public domain as, long, uh, as well as, as this one because it's a work created by an employee of the US uh, government. Um, an astronaut. Um, the image is in the public domain, anyone can use it, and uh, many people have chosen um, to do so. The reason why people are allowed to use this image is one paragraph in the United States uh, copyright, um, paragraph 105 in Title 17, chapter 1 um, of the United States Code. It allows uh, it, it basically denies copyright uh, to any work of the United States government. It doesn't apply to work created on the, um, on the state level, and um, um, there might be some open issues on the question of copyright on these images outside of the United States. Um, I just want to highlight this one. It's a beauty. Um, uh, Sometimes actually you stumble upon brilliant prose in, 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 in law, and this is actually up on a time. Um, this is um, French Prime Minister, and this is government created work as well because um, it's actually taken, it's, it's cropped, it's cropped out of um, a statement. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the photograph in this case, uh, he was struggling along with uh, Ronald Reagan. So, and I, a few years ago, I was at the uh, French. Um, um, Parliament at the assembly, and I was asking, isn't it weird that um, the most prominent picture of one of your politicians is made by an American photographer? Um, and they, they agreed, but they haven't still um, drawn the right conclusions out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in this case, thank you, uh, uh, unnamed photographer from the uh, DOD. There are a couple of developments going on um, that somehow relate to this topic. One is uh, the open data discussion, the idea that um, um, in the, uh, open um, government data, and it means that the government uh, should release data, information, works um, that uh, it has created for various reasons. Um, there are uh, various freedom of information initiatives and there are uh, transparency laws and one of the things they all have in common is they do not question the copyright status. They simply assume that in most cases there is copyright on, on, on this information and then they deal and they, they think around and ask them, uh, well should we make some kind of um, regulations that the state has to license the content uh, to uh, third parties, in some cases people are advocating uh, governments to put this content under a CC license, uh, hopefully um, um, uh, a, libre, uh, uh, a free license that allows using it, by, but I haven't uh, came across, uh, come, come across many people actually questioning the copyright status of this one. So uh, this is something we're doing, we're just questioning the copyright status and we're asking um, 
why is it that, for example, in the uh, German copyright law, um, there is a paragraph on, on, on amtliches Werk, which means uh, official work, um, and this paragraph 5 basically says laws and regulations and court orders, they are um, not subject to copyright, but everything else is. Um, there's a, a section 2 that it tends to broaden up the, the amount of work um, which is uh, also public domain, but it fails to do so in practice. And if you look at this, well, copyright is a highly regulated thing, and, and there are an international treaties uh, governing this, and the Berne Convention, in this case, um, is the only international treaty I could find uh, regulating uh, official works and, and, and the kind of government work they're talking about, and it basically says, do whatever you want to do. They do it with slightly more pros, but in the end they say, um, it's up to the states to define the uh, copyright status. So any country is more or less free to pick um, to <coughs> say, well, copyright um, should be the same for all the stuff we do, or it shouldn't. Be. So what I consider is that the United States is is, is correct in in denying uh, copyright to um, official text, and other other country is also in compliance with Berne Convention if they deny uh, if if they say, well, the, uh, the official texts are in copyright the same way as any other country. So, and this is one highlight um, because once you start talking about um, denying copyright, once you talk about um, expanding access and, and, and uh, rights of usage for anyone on, on government work, um, there's the argument of money. Um, uh, and one is um, the state or the government institutions, and are the uh, institutions funded by the government um, are making so much money. Um, selling rights of usage to, to third parties and, and um, we got really lucky because we, there were many members of parliament who helped us asking the government questions and how much money do you actually make and these are some examples, this is the uh, federal criminal police office, uh, Bundeskriminalamt uh, and how much money did they make in 2012, this is the most recent number, uh, 120, <laughs> 129 uh, euro, um, secret service, 98, uh, <laughs> Yeah, 1998, 1998, federal police, uh, 13, and um, many more examples, and some uh, do not make any money, some make uh, any money, it's uh, 5 million euro per year for the entire federal government in, in Germany, and uh, you can put this into a perspective, and, and, and does, it, um, does, it, does it include geodata? And also the it includes geodata. It includes um, all rights of usage, and in many cases, it includes. Um, it's a, in many cases, it's a, it's a package deal. So when you um, when you rent um, or when you ask, uh, if you are a film crew and you and want to take pictures um, um, at, a, at a government office, um, you you have to in some cases pay some some rent, and as part of the rent, um, you get the permission to. Uh, to create works there. So in some cases, rights of usage are a small, tiny part of, of the total sum you pay, but uh, it's calculated in there. And um, I'm glad that um, my talk is, or my, my workshop here is right after the science group, because now you're familiar with uh, visualization of, of data. Um, this, <laughs> the, the red part, the red part is the sum of money, uh, the, the, the amount of uh, the, the share that Germany makes from licensing. And the blue part is the rest of it. We could try to, try to magnify it, and then we would uh, come up with uh, this amount. <laughs> that's the and, yes, that is, yeah, that's, that's the, yeah, um, it's a resolution <laughs> issue. Um, and since we are an international audience, I just converted into different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but there, there might be uh, certain institutions which are based on this moment. Um, yes, they are in, already included there. Out of these five million, um, I'm able, I'm easily able to, to question um, 4.5 million of this because in many cases this is just a kind of um, um, are you familiar with a kind of uh, a hat and a, and a, um, a trick play where you just uh, have a, yes shell game. Um, the state has. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, uh, court orders are not subject to copyright, and there's a company selling copies of these court orders 
uh, to, for example, government institutions. The company is a um, incorporated company belonging to the state, and they make roughly three million euros per year in selling these copies to the government institutions. At the same time, um, they um, they they pay royalties of three million to the state. So it's it's <laughs> they could arbitrarily make forty million per year. At the same time, we just increase the, the the amount of money they pay back. It's it's. No, I think, I think you're completely right, but I think the point that you're making was also valid that in particular some of those institutions make part of their budget from selling this stuff, which economically doesn't make sense for the taxpayer nor for the government, but yes, as they rely on it, when we want to change these policies, we have to, as a society, find a political solution for it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's it's normally not, not the... It's normally not the case that this person has no chance and uh, it needs an upper decision to say, okay, these people are tax funded, so they don't have to yeah. earn the money they get. Um, so. co exactly correct. Um, it's, it's um, oops, there's one slide missing. Um, the, the interesting part is when I was working at the German National Library, um, we were always given the information, um, our institution um, makes one million euro per year by selling uh, catalog data uh, out of a total budget of 80 million, so it was a significant amount. What they failed to tell us every time was our customers were other federal institutions. So one part of the public uh, did, uh, institutions paid another part some money. Um, it, it was just maddening um, because every time someone was talking about um, releasing stuff under a free license, for example, um, they said, no, we can't do this because this job and this job and this job applies to them. And here's, well, after asking these questions on, on how much money do you make, the next question, a series of questions, is um, how much money do you spend in order to make this money? How much do you spend in, in, in sending out um, um, uh, um, bills and, and how much money do you make to, to handle this and how much, like, we're not talking about even the, the hidden costs of, of not being able to share information, just about the, the direct costs of how much money do, do you have to spend in order to get this kind of, let's say, um, uh, 128 uh, euros per year um, uh, if you are the, the criminal police of Germany. Uh, in France we have exactly the same problem where an institution sell other, uh, other items, pictures to other institutions, it's called uh, Réunion des Musées Nationaux, and it's exactly the same problem, and in fact it, it is believed that it costs money to the state, but it's just a political issue, because all politics wants the, um, the museum to earn money some, somehow, um, so they have to sell something, but they sell something, but they lose money because they have to put an infrastructure, a process to sell this, so that's stupid. The just weights of public money. Yeah. Um, here's the, the thing we're working on this year as we come into Germany. We are um, writing a draft bill that would change um, paragraph 5 of the um, German copyright law. We're not going to, to introduce it into Parliament because we are not a member of uh, the Parliament. Um, <laughs> we are just um, intending to, to release this draft and to inspire people and to inspire and trigger a conversation about um, what is technically possible, what is possible um, in terms of international law and, and existing treaties, and, and to see um, what would actually change if a much larger share of, of government created works would not longer be um, um, subject to copyright. Because in many cases, there would be still income. Uh, government institutions would still be able to charge for services, for example, the, uh, they would be able to uh, charge for providing content in a specific uh, format. So I just call them and say, uh, I need uh, a copy of some record. And they could say, okay, we're doing this um, according uh, to um, to how much money it actually costs us to, to, uh, to go to the archive to make a copy and to send it to you um, via email or via fax or um, via, via post system. It would just no longer... Um, there would no longer be a, a copyright protection uh, attached to this one. Um, this is ongoing work. Um, this is um, something um, we would, um, or we intend to, to actually share with anyone in this room, outside this room, uh, with the public. And, um, and interestingly, this is a topic of, of copyright that can 
more or less easily be transferred in other countries. Because um, I'm still waiting for input, but as far as I know, there is no international obligation for any country um, forcing them to to restrict um, or to to um, to put copyright on, on government works. Berne Convention in this case is, is a free for all card, um, and um, it would be just a matter of of, an, of a national parliamentary decision to um, to adjust to tweak this copyright law. Uh, maybe follow the American example. Maybe try to find something new. Um, it's basically up to you. Um, and one key part, and this is something um, that um, has been proven to be uh, effective from my point of view, is um, go ask your government how much money they make. Um, because if you don't ask the question, uh, it will be brought in as an argument um, at some point in time. You can anticipate this conversation, and you can actually embarrass anyone in the, uh, uh, in the process very early um, when they actually have to give you detailed numbers. Actually, do you have an overview of uh, who and, and what exactly do you ask? I mean, uh, most likely there is no, no already statistics about it. And, and every institution has their own numbers and they are compiling it differently, so there are going to be a lot of uh, methodological problems. And then, uh, of course, anyone can, can answer that, uh, you know, actually this does not include this or that and you're not correct and so on. Um, you are absolutely correct. Um, there are methodological issues in this one, and in some cases um, um, they are they are working in, in our advantages because we can uh, always question them and we can uh, you know, refine them. And of course, uh, we got some experience in, in asking the right question because the first set of questions was properly legally answered, uh, but this was just just pointless because uh, they did not really intend to answer them in a meaningful way, just in a, in a, in a correct way. Um, <coughs> So you have to uh, think about going rounds and rounds and rounds. Um, this is, for example, one uh, of this so-called Kleine Anfrage, which is a, um, uh, a question formally asked by one um, one faction in the in the parliament. Um, so the government doesn't answer to us; does answer to members of parliament. Uh, it's 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 now in the public record, um, and um, there is some flexibility in, in how they answer. Usually it's up to them, so um, the government receives the question um, and then distributes the question to the department most likely to be able to answer it and it's up to the department to ask, in this case, every other department how much money they make then they to compile the answer. So what you can do is if you talk to a member of parliament, if you inspire them, if you suggest to them that they, answer, they, they ask the questions, you have to tell them that um, they have to ask the most specific, most detailed way possible, um, and then it will be a question for uh, a matter for the government to say, well, we don't have this much detailed information. Um, in the case of Germany, we do like administration, we do like numbers and, and stuff. So um, they did have the number. I was surprised to see this detailed information, um, and it's it's not well. It's it's a public. It's on public record now. So technically, they, they wouldn't be allowed to lie. They just are able to just, just point you to the wrong direction, but um, uh, you can ask them again anytime soon. And, and we just um, looked at the, uh, the results and then we got uh, through the list one by one. Well, uh, it's, it's not so hard to get a member of parliament to ask anything, uh, but the problem is that you have to, actually, in most cases, you are the one who has to give them the correct question. Because yes. uh, well, they won't be able to do it. By themselves. The, the thing you can always do is um, take our questions and, and, and translate them and, and see if they fit into. Um, exactly. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, how can I find uh, this information, the, the exact questions and so on? Um, is, there are several ways. Find it one, or? Well, one way is, and I put this on um, because um, you can contact me uh, and, and do it directly or. Um, there is a, a website we are maintaining. It, it's not a high traffic website. It called, it's called Urheberrecht, uh, copyright.wikimedia.de, which is right now a blog um, in which we um, give out some information about ongoing um, developments in copyright, especially with regards to, um, to state, um, uh, to, to government created works. Um, 
you can use Google Translate to get the gist out of it. I mean, if you don't speak German, uh, that's something you should change too, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you will be able to, for example, get the, um, the, the identification number uh, from the uh, uh, Google Translate works okay. really, really well on German legal texts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. the yeah. Yes. Um, if, if you like, uh, German English preserves some part of the meaning. Yeah, I'm interested if you're, I'm interested if you're interested in the distinction between works that a government produces and works that a government funds to be produces. So. Obviously, in the U.S., the fact that all government-produced works, like the pictures you mentioned, are in the public domain is fantastic. But the works that the government itself funds are of equal, if not greater, importance. And the things I'm thinking of, and those of you that might know me know that I'm biased towards this, are things like research articles and the data yeah, that go along yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of the broader idea of open policy, so public access to publicly funded research, and how that sort of intersects with your interest in the public domain. Yeah, there should be full access to works um, which are created because there was funding by the government, but I don't think copyright is the proper tool yeah. to achieve this. Um, there are open access initiatives. There is the um, the um, National Institute of Health right. uh, initiative. There is, um, I think, NIST and many more institutions have implemented right. um, policies um, on open access. So um, you get a grant uh, funding for your work as long as you promise to um, to, to follow the open access strategy. Right. Um, and in many, many cases, um, American institutions are on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the brighter side of the spectrum of possible open access. Um, no, no, but um, this is something that I would like to encourage you. Um, follow the open access conversations too, right. uh, but see um, whether it makes sense to, to just make a distinction and say, well, um, something that is just state funded, and this might apply to, um, to TV stations. Um, public television, public radio, too. It, in many cases, it's not part of government. It's not part of the administration. It's just money coming from them via them. So you might leave them out. Um, and of course, um, oops. <laughs> oh, that's, that's my wife just um, gave me um, good, good luck on, on this uh, talk. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's really important and, um, um, of course, um, the Bern Convention's uh, free for all card might not even apply to this kind of material, um, as important as it might, might be. Yeah, no, I was just interested in hearing, sort of, if you thought about the intersection between, between the two. Yeah. It, it will be a tricky one. Yes. But on government data, there's another number which is good if you know the numbers which the government earns. There's also some European countries, like I think Netherlands, and uh, I think not Estland, Finland, I'm one of them, who already opened up and they have a non-commercial use also, or commercial use is also possible. So we have first numbers in Europe. Uh, what happens if these government produced data is given also to the uh, economy? So how, how much money is earned, how much uh, works are created, uh, jobs are created? So there's on the European public sector information platform and they have a blog and then they, you can see some numbers, okay, this is the money the government earns if it sticks to its data, and this is the money uh, which is earned if it can be used by everybody. There's also a nice, uh, another number which you can start using. Yeah. For this is, this is uh, the copyright notice at the um, Dutch government's website, um, government.nl, and it's in, on, on rights.nl, um, basically it says um, CC0, um, so they didn't change copyright, they just made a form of decision. This is a decision they could withdraw. Um, so it's it's not the kind of lasting permanent solution, but it's actually something that took them uh, 15 minutes of discussion. Um, as, as far as you know, um, um, Creative Commons in the Netherlands and, and um, some of our friends and family were involved in this uh, um, consult, uh, consultation. And this is something um, I, ca I could live with uh, um, as well to a certain extent uh, to, to ease the transition. Um, and uh, you should look into these options as well. Uh, one, two. Um, you touched the, the money issue. How much money would we lose if we start uh, giving, uh, giving freely our content? But that's, all, that's only a counter argument once you're in the debate. So once you start a debate telling them that they, need to, they, that they can 
release their content, they say we lose money. How do you uh, start a debate? How do you uh, provoke it? Telling, so, telling the government officials that we already paid for the content you create, that's very nice theoretically, but what's in it for them? There are, um, and I'm, I'm glad this question is coming from Israel, because um, in, the, in the larger uh, presentation, uh, actually I made some example from, from Israel, um, what is this one? I mean, you could appeal to national pride. I mean, this is um, this is um, as a motion that you can get uh, in, in, in Europe, um, but you can also um, have this kind of conversation. Um, some government official um, tweets out that uh, content is released, and then you say, "Well, what a shame that uh, we can't use it." Um, one of the key arguments, key arguments, is, is Wikipedia can't use it. Um, if something is released, to start the entire conversation about about government. Um, so again, freely licensing thing, thing is one strategy here. Um, fixing the entire copyright with regards to um, government creative works is another one. But at least to get the conversation started, <coughs> see, um, does it make sense for a government, for a state, to both own co copyright and then to uh, restrict access to it or to, to deny uh, reuse? Um, and um, I think this is the, the uh, copy of a um, Israeli a government decision, so it's a law, it's, it's something the government uh, agreed on, it's... Um, it's not a law, it's a regulation. Okay, so it can also be withdrawn and, and, and adjusted, basically um, opening up access to a specific part of, of the, the um, cultural heritage, the photographic cultural heritage. Um, you say, I think, uh, no, for all photos uh, taken by government officials. That's what this one says. And I think it's something, and you said um, the, the minister are uh, responsible for implementing Yes, each it, ministry so is uh, responsible for um, setting their own policy um, yeah. on the basis of this decision. Okay, this is for example one, one um, occasion, one, 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 one way to start a conversation. Uh, you simply ask them, you ask them in a public way, you write emails to them. You can simply say, um, how, about, how about your archive? Why can't we use it? Um, and um, this is, and of course, in some cases, um, someone else is starting the conversation too. And you can always try to compare. If there is a G8 summit or G20 or kind of the national summit, you have always these kind of um, uh, comparisons when one photography team um, is is um, is um, sending out. Um, pictures um, unrestricted and one photo of the team um, has just a label do not use written all over it um, kind of visible watermarks and, and all this stuff so when there is an international event you can um, you can highlight the differences and you can ask them what purpose does it serve for your government to spend money making photographs that no one else can, uh, can use yes. and then you can slowly push towards questioning the entire system yeah, I want to mention, I did some research on this in Hong Kong, and the Hong Kong government is always proud to operate like a business, and um, the idea of not charging for information is completely foreign to them. So, and actually the, inform the information income, the revenue from uh, selling information is uh, a bit higher in Hong Kong. So, for instance, uh, very profitable company registry uh, information, uh, lands registry, uh, and of course geospatial information. So it's not like in Germany. Germany is obviously quite poor in making money off of, uh, of the license. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But the Hong Kong uh, government agency uh, is left to each government agency what they do with, uh, with their products. Um, but some of them are obviously they, they, they charge whatever they can take get from the market. So changing this philosophy here is quite difficult. I think in many Asian countries where um, information, public information, is a scarcity and not open by default. We really need to think about how, what, what is the rhetoric to really change this kind of thinking about public information. You're correct. There, there might be some countries outside um, doing a better job than Germany in, in monetizing this. Yes. Um, and still, <coughs> I'm very happy to see actual numbers from this and to see if the money they make a exceeds the money it takes for them to make money, mm -hmm. and b if it. Um, comes close to the money they, it requires to actually come up with the data and, and to come up with the uh, land survey and, and the measure of the data. If these two conditions are uh, here, one might have to change strategy if this is the case. I'm, uh, I'm doubtful about this, but um, I'm open to, to more data.
just two observations, and uh, also in Germany it's different for the, especially for the city states, they tend to have a, a higher, um, they, they tend to have make more, uh, generate more money on the, on the PSI they sell. Nevertheless, I think that I would I would ask the same questions that the Michael just um, Matthias just uh, just raised and um, and also I would recommend not to enter the economy debate because to be honest very little is known there's very little evidence based about the real economic impacts of pricing public sector information we are just I mean just at the beginning there's no long term studies that could show us what was the real impact on the economy, on the government itself, on government efficiency. All these things are really almost untapped. You will find some of the early reports on the uh, already mentioned PSI platform, but it, it's very early days for this kind of, of uh, serious economic discussion. So if, if you're looking for advocacy, I would really recommend to go for the political argument and try to convince politicians and government uh, agencies that transparency and openness and collaboration could be a strategic uh, benefit for them in, instead of entering this economic debate. But that's just an observation. Right. In, in, uh, in European Union, it's only for European uh, Union countries. But in a way, in Poland, it was such a story that uh, of, uh, if, uh, uh, governmental agency responsible for geodata uh, did not want to reveal the data of, uh, about the flow of river and shape of ri uh, rivers. And then there is a, a EU directive which clearly says, don't remember the number of this directive at the moment, that all in environmental related uh, uh, data should be released for free. And then they, go, they went to the court and won simply with this governmental institution and there are several other such directives like an inspired directive, then directive for open uh, f, f, uh, for open uh, f documents of governmental of government and so on and if you screen the legislation of various EU countries it's quite often that they are, do not follow very much these directives but then you can use this to, to push the government to change it. Yes, yes, of course. Um, you should engage in, in existing debates like open data. You should engage in, in freedom of information conversations um, that are all related to this one. And they, they um, in many cases, they try to achieve the same goal. Um, and in some cases, um, after long conversations, many government institutions are willing to admit that this is not about money, this is um, about exercising control, um, and this is sometimes about covering up um, failures to some extent. Um, there was a person from, a, from the um, municipality um, operating a harbor. They, 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 the municipality operates and owns the harbor, and they are by, um, by legal contract they are obligated to, uh, to, to maintain a certain depth uh, for entering ships. And they realized that uh, most of the ships entering the harbor are uh, smaller than um, the maximum size they are legally obligated, so they, they fail to just dig in and, and, and take out the sand. Um, and every time they see that a large ship is approaching, um, they just dig as much as they have to um, uh, to, to let the ship enter. So um, that we can't give you the measurements for, for the depths of, of, um, of our harbor because it would be real um, that we're not doing our job. Um, this is not about copyright, this is not about preserving uh, creativity. It's some kind of creativity, but not the point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, uh, they usually say that this is an argument you couldn't make it public. Um, so, um, to some extent, the money argument will be just uh, the ones they're most comfortable with doing, and not the real argument why they are hesitating uh, really releasing uh, really stuff. Uh, I see this economic argument is very really interesting, very really utilitarian, I think. But I agree with him in the case that you can use this uh, very clearly in the case that the government use the economic argument also. In the case that the government say, no, it will have huge impacts in your income, something like that. But you know, I see this, this copyright in government content what more like a political question, what more a moral question. No, I am Brazilian. In Brazil, how the government content is 
Tom Kid Man. But I see I I I imagine it's like a really strange thing like you know you have the some agency that I see some photos for the for the government and you want to choose. No, I want to choose this government photos for my work and the government photos like sue you for paying the content of the government is like oh we are paying you are, you are paying your agency you are paying your photographers no the 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 public the people has to to learn to separate what you stop the separation that what is state and what is public because the state is public and they have to understand that if the public information data has copyright in, in this copy, this income for copyright shall be distributed after, shall be distributed, shall be shared for other the citizens. From it's the only kind of interpretation this, of this. I would just like to bridge to the previous session because this kind of freedom of information requests uh, can also be applied to glams. There is many glams that uh, come with the same argument: oh, we would lose revenue if we would uh, put our images or whatever we have under free licenses. And if you dig deeper, you find out that most of them don't make money, or they're on equivalent level to at least in Germany and Switzerland, where we have look, but also in the UK. And uh, so that is another point of entry. Uh, it's not really the friendliest point of entry because if you start having this discussion with the museum there, they will probably not like to talk to you. But it is important to keep it in mind because the argument will be brought up, and then it is important to write, uh, have it in your back, uh, in the back of your mind that you're likely to win on that front. In France, uh, what we have done generally with museums to remind the curator that publishing things is one of their mission, and publishing things to the public is one of their missions. It's written in the law um, for our curators uh, when they are government curator. And it's really their mission to share the thing, so free license is exactly what they need, in fact. And that works. Uh, well, when agencies are uh, in control of their own copyright, either a GLAM or uh, some department of a government, uh, do you think it's easier to talk to the individual departments about just releasing their information one by one, or do what, like, you have a model amendment to the copyright laws, like, it's easier to peg away at the big legislature, or? Um, it depends on my mood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there are some days, there are some days I, I prefer the kind of shotgun approach when I use several various tactics at the same time and see what actually hits them. Um, it, it, it's helpful to have some kind of open sparing partner that takes the opposite role, like good cop, bad cop situation, when one is offering them something in return, collaboration, clan partnerships and us, and one person just insists on that the fact that the government, uh, the, um, the public has already paid for it and, and there is a legal obligation and there is a moral obligation, and um, basically um, telling them that they can freely act now or be forced to act later. Uh, it helps if your government or the European Parliament has just issued the, the PSI directive, the Public Sector Information Directive, that slowly moves towards the individual's right to demand information under a free license or under certain rights um, coming close to, to this. So you, you can create an environment that says them waiting is no longer an option. You can act now, you can, you can be the proactive guy, or you can just be the person being drawn to uh, talk to court and then having, having to just release this stuff uh, anyway. Um, this is something that um, in many cases, just depending on, on your personal preferences, um, as long as they, they work. And of course, of there are cultural differences in, in many things. Uh, but that, um, personally, starting with a friendly approach and then moving towards more kind of insisting methods um, seems to work in general. Um, I'm from Australia. We seem to be a little bit further down the track than some of you. That our government has now has a policy that all of its departments will release all of their stuff under either creative under a Creative Commons license, either the Creative Commons or Creative Commons non-commercial. Which um, is bad. So, 
which is bad. I mean, the non-commercial. Uh, well, unless you are communist or something like that. Personally, I'm personally, I'm personally very, commercial. very commercial. much in favour of non-commercial, <laughs> but it can. The point is that non-commercial <laughs> can't be used on the Wikipedia. <laughs> but it's uh, each department gets the choice as to which one of those is going to go where, whether yeah. it will go with the non-commercial or not. But I still have the problem of the United States. The things can't be put into the public domain. Uh, the United States will not accept that. And one of the questions that any government will ask... Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Sorry? Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Yes. The United States has some treaty with us that says that, that, uh, that was took in uh, effect in 1996 called... What is it? Tell me out. Right. Right. And... They, it says that they recognise anything that we had in the public domain at the time that treaty was signed. And since at the time our uh, 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 expiry date was 50 years, the United States has since put pressure on us to lift it to 70, but government stuff is still at 50. Um, Are you talking about the, the Uruguay round? Yes. Okay, that's it. I don't think that's it, but it was one of those treaties, and therefore only stuff from 1946 or before is accepted as being in the public domain by the United States. So that gives me a problem with government stuff, in that so everything up till 1963 is now in the public domain in Australia, but I cannot in the United the United States will not accept that. Um, Which is what the, problem on the Wikipedia Commons. Yes, so no, so we can't put that on Commons, but we can we can try putting it on Wikipedia. But I have trouble with that. Um, so we can't get stuff. Uh, there. And and what's going to happen is that we're going to we had the U.S. forced us to lift the uh, um, the copyright to 70 years. So there's a we haven't got it's only government stuff affected at the moment, but. In a few years' time, everything else is going to start falling into the public domain, and we have will have hell trying to track down who the copyright owner who can't enforce his copyright is. In a, in, we won't be able to put up anything at all. Often work, Simon. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it, the point is that there won't be any copyright on it in Australia. It will be in the public domain. But it will not. The United States will not accept that, so we will not be able to upload it. What do we do? No, the, the, the United States does not accept the rule of the shorter term. That's correct. It is their U.S. The government did say its policy is to increase the term could you, could you, uh, around you, the world. Could you, could you check if this treaty you're referring to is actually the Europe round, um, uh, world wide round? Yeah, yeah, there's there's something. Yes. So in, in this case. Um, uh, I haven't thought about the implications on government works. I just uh, was aware of the issue of, of um, stuff going into the public domain after 70 years of... of 50 in Australia. Um, 50. Um, if, if government created work and, and provisions on, on uh, public domain of government created work is being affected by the Uruguay round, uh, that's something, some version, it would be the first, the national treaty I could find having some, some uh, influence on, on... And that, which is what I wanted to tell you, because you said you didn't know of yes. any, and I've just given you... That's not only the case of Australia as well, because there are countries where are still running Crown copyright, i.e. the government produced contents are copyrighted for a certain amount of time. Yes. So, mostly Commonwealth countries are still having this Crown copyright or government copyright. And that is the issue that, for example, the, the things produced by the government are copyrighted for a certain amount of time, i.e. 50 years, and then copyright expires and becomes a public domain. But if the United States considers that they don't accept a shorter term, then there will be conflict on uh, Wiki, Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons, because obviously Wikipedia, Wikimedia, whatever Wikimedia, Wikimedia stuff is on... Uh, is op uh, operated under the US law. But I'm pretty sure that I heard the law, the law Avi. Uh, we, we, we had the same problem in Israel. And I, uh, on a conversation between Paul and Jeff, uh, the foundation's lawyer, they found some way we can. He convinced them that the, the Israeli law applies to these pictures and we can now upload them to Congress. Right. With permissions of the WMI staff. Ah. 
So, so they they found the walk around. I'm not a lawyer. I have no idea what the walk around is. No, do I care? No, no. But they do have some walk around. I have to dig into that because I could really use that. I can. I miss this lecture. You guys should swap notes on that. If you can fix the U.S. law, right? Because I know I think it's your. I think it's the interpretation that's incorrect. I know. I don't think so. I think it's the way it's trying to say that. Uh, well, that, that's that's why I'm saying I'm curious to, to see what Jeff said. I don't know when they will upload it, actually, because I'm not the one who's up in the corner. I know it will be better up in the corner. But if this case on last week, you mean it's the case that we have a few months after. Hopefully, we can get it shorter. And the organizer will get shorter by the time and effort. So, unfortunately, there is a copyright law, but somewhere else. Briefly, uh, briefly, uh, briefly, 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 bri